Looks like I'm gaining on my father. casualties.
Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, how I've waited to see you in person rather than through a screen, Captain Kenny. Don't get ahead of yourself, General. Little girl, have you no intention of returning to my side? And you, whelp, do you wish to join me? I want to be with Fidel and Miki, not you. Who would ever take the side of a man who uses children as tools? People's lives aren't toys for you to play with. <sighs> the time for talk has ended. Faria, bestow your power upon me! Yes, sir. Maria! No, sis! I have no sister. Your orders, General. Maria! Lend me your power, minion! shall prove the veracity of my tree! This, are you ready to die? Attacks don't work on you. Nor does Signature to He's surrounded by a force field that's connected to another dimension of the space time symbol. to show me the hell. I will. Thanks to you, we were able to solve one of space time symbology's many mysteries. In order for her power to act, certain types of hormones must be secreted in the subject's brain. For example, your subject secreted the necessary hormones when experiencing strong emotions. Just trust. Now let me understand the message. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. My God. Or by the the necessary hormones to This is the face of the man. Face of the man symbolic. Get up, Relia. You're just gonna leave your sister like this? No matter how many times you fall, just... just believe in me and get up. Take control of your own future with Faria. I believe in you more than anyone in the world. Don't jump in the way of Go turn Faria back to her normal self. I'll do it. I'll be the one to save my sister. What? Okay, time to throw everything we've got at him.
Well, now we know this will not be a dull affair. Very well. It is time. Behold the results of our latest symbological research. Your lives are now forfeit! Sir, 
If we go any further, we'll obliterate the subject's gestalt. Do it! How dare you! Get out of my way, you worthless cretin! against his control! Break free of it! Silence, whelp! I believe in you, Relia. I always have. And I know you can rise up with Feria if you truly want to. We can beat this man if we fight together, Feria. I believe in you, sis. And I believe in both of you. I do. <laughs>
We did win, didn't we? Yes. That we did. His strength is dwindling. His wave patterns are getting astonishingly small. Luna! Chris! Kronos is destined to crumble! Should I perish here? <laughs> Braun alone can't win all wars. Likewise, my fascist assailant. I'll be observing your lot from on high. Repudiation to you. Honor to Kronos! I certainly do. Relia deserves a good life. A caring, maybe mentoring dad. Like Beryl was when I was young. Relia, I'm so sorry. What's more, I should thank you. My wish was answered due to your... Grow up and be... The joyous girl I couldn't. Varian, no! Don't be so sad. Since I'll be with you in your heart. Captain's log. Space date, November 7, 537. Our mission in the Fate Creed system has concluded. With the death of its leader, General Alma, the rebellion collapsed in upon itself. As the coup d'etat ended in abject failure, the Kronos government was able to regain its authority. Days later, President Mutal declared that Kronos would join the Pan-Galactic Federation, thus swelling our ranks and leaving one fewer enemy. I have a feeling, however, that there will be repercussions from this incident that last for quite some time. In my opinion, it is now abundantly clear that the Federation is at a major crossroads. It is only a matter of time, I assume, before we must re-evaluate the form we wish the Federation to henceforth take. Kronos was officially inducted into the Pan-Galactic Federation. And while the Kronos incident that engendered the Alliance was certainly noteworthy, it was not the only seminal event of Space Day 537. The year also became known for various progressive reforms, which would serve as defining points of Federation policy for years to come. Creed's fate regarding the Federation was officially decided today. Because the planet is not sufficiently civilized, it will not be recognized as a legitimate member of the Federation. As we influence the planet to a great extent, though, it was designated a protectorate. I plan to ask Command to appoint Victor the Inspector General of Fakri. I cannot imagine there is anyone else in the galaxy better suited to the job than him. Now that I mention one Fakri, 
I should probably record what happened to the rest. Everyone involved in the incident immigrated to Earth. After all they'd experienced of the outside world, we couldn't simply let them return to an underdeveloped planet. Besides, they unanimously decided to come of their own accord, which is what I was hoping for anyway. Miki's currently studying her heart out to become a science officer. According to Anne, she's got a real knack for this sort of thing. Already understanding the basics of symbology doesn't hurt either. If there's anything that holds her back, though, it's reading and writing. You can't be too hard on her, as she didn't grow up with the Terran syllabary. But she still has a long road ahead of her. Victor was able to enlist in the Federation's military and based upon his distinguished record, he was appointed as an instructor. Considering he's a citizen of an underdeveloped planet, this is a historic accomplishment for him. Personally, I'd like to see Command put him in charge of overseeing his home planet, but the decision ultimately rests with him. Thanks in part to an endorsement from Dr. Crew, Fiore was accepted as a researcher in the newly built Symbological Genetics Laboratory on Moonbase. I say accepted, but the whole facility was basically established for her sake. Her knowledge surpasses even our own scientists in some areas, so I assume they're more than happy to take advantage of her genius. There's no way they won't make at least a few breakthroughs with her working on their team. All is quiet on the Anne front as she continues to work as a science officer aboard the Charles D. Gold. Her looks are what sealed the deal for me when hiring her, but I'll be damned if she isn't one capable science officer. Once I'm finally given my new assignment, I won't hesitate to bring her along. As for me, the myriad and valiant deeds I performed in quelling the Kronos Rebellion earned me a promotion. Nothing's official yet, but word around the water cooler is that I'll become an admiral. To think, me, with my own fleet. What's more, the ship they'll assign me won't be any ordinary one. It'll supposedly be equipped with some rather snazzy technology, of an experimental and gravitic warp kind. I guess this goes to show, you can't make an omelet without breaking a few rules. Fidel's now diligently studying to become an officer in the Federation's military. Truth be told, we'd already accept him as a foot soldier, but he says he won't settle for anything less than being a crewman on a battleship. Now, I'm not one to balk at lending my friends a hand, but this is a battle he needs to fight on his own. Prove that I was right to believe in you and get your butt up here, Fidel. Hey there, your snack's ready. Excellent. Either when this is done. You'll burn out studying like that. Miki, you barely try at all. I bet you'll never transcend Emerson Oran like that. <sighs> what about just being your wife? What did you say? Uh, nothing. Nothing important. I said we should both try our hardest. Yeah, let's. Great. Finished. I'll take that snack now. <laughs> 